Chapter 1.5 The Short Term Effects of Exercise on the Body Systems In this video we will look at the immediate effects of exercise on the muscular system, the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. So we've looked at these three systems individually, we're now going to have a look at what effects exercise has on each of them. So then, when we exercise, this causes changes to take place to our body. These changes can either be short term or long term. Short term effects happen immediately as a result of us starting exercise, whereas long term effects take time to occur as a result of regular exercise. So we'll look at the muscular system first then, okay? And the first change that we have, or the first short term effect, is an increase in muscle temperature. Okay, so we know ourselves, as soon as we start exercising, we tend to feel hot and sweaty as a result of working hard. So, when our muscles use oxygen to produce energy, heat is given off as a waste product, which in turn raises the temperature of our muscles, which makes us feel hotter or warmer. The second short term effect is an increase in delivery of oxygen to the working muscles. So, we know ourselves that uh, the muscles, when they're working, they need oxygen in order to produce energy in order to move. So this is delivered to the muscles in the blood. So the more kind of demand there is for this oxygen, the more oxygen then needs to be delivered to meet this demand. The third effect is an increase in lactic acid production. So when we're exercising at high intensity, this lactic acid is then produced. Okay, so this happens when we're exercising anaerobically. So lactic acid causes muscular pain and fatigue and is removed during recovery when oxygen is present. So if we think about a 100 meter sprinter, if we're sprinting flat out at high intensity, we can only work for that 10, 15 uh, seconds or so before we feel too tired to then carry on running. Okay, And this is a result of lactic acid um, fatigue in our muscles and making them tired so that they can't work any longer. Moving on then, um, the short term effects of the cardiac or on the cardiovascular system. Okay, So we have an increase in heart rate, stroke volume and cardiac output. And the reason, reason we have this is uh, because of the increased demand for oxygen by the muscles, the cardiovascular system needs to speed up its delivery through the blood. Okay, So we know that oxygen is delivered, delivered to the muscles in the blood. So as a result, we need to speed up the blood so we can get more oxygen to these muscles. So to do this, the heart must beat more often and pump more blood per beat. Okay, so by beating more often, this is an increase in your heart rate. Uh, by pumping more blood per beat, this is an increase in your stroke volume. And collectively, as a result of these two increasing, we then get more blood being pumped around the body per minute, which is increasing cardiac output. We also have a redistribution of blood flow to the working muscles. Okay, so to help with the delivery of oxygen through the blood to the working muscles, there is increased blood flow uh, to the muscles that need it. Okay, and as a result, there's less blood sent to the muscles and organs that don't have this same high demand for oxygen. Okay, so we're just sending the blood and the oxygen uh, primarily to to the areas of the body that it needs it. So the muscles that are working, the organs that are working. Okay, and those particular areas of the body that aren't working, that haven't got that high demand for oxygen, they're seeing less of the blood flow. Okay, and this is known as as a vascular shunt, okay? So a vascular shunt is where there's a redistribution of blood to the working muscles. Finally, we'll look at the short-term effects on the respiratory system, okay? So very similar to the first effect in the cardiovascular system, okay, we have an increase in breathing rate, tidal volume, and minute ventilation. Okay, so again, in order to meet the increased demand for oxygen by the working muscles, there needs to be more oxygen present in the lungs that can then enter the blood through gaseous exchange at the alveoli. Therefore, the body needs to breathe more often and take in more air per breath. Okay, so by breathing more often, we see an increase in breathing rate, and taking in more air per breath, this is an increase in tidal volume. And as a result, this means more air is inhaled per minute, which is an increase in your minute ventilation. As well as more oxygen being breathed in, this also allows a greater amount of carbon dioxide to be then breathed out. Okay, so we know ourselves as soon as we start exercising, we can feel that breathing rate. Okay, we, we, we can kind of say we're out of breath. Okay, because we're breathing faster and deeper in order to meet this demand for oxygen. 
So then, this kind of sums up um, the short-term effects that exercise has on the three body systems. Okay, it's important to remember that these happen immediately as a result of exercise, and they return back to normal once exercise is finished. Okay, so as soon as we start exercising, and we see an increased heart rate or an increased breathing rate. These actually go back to normal when exercise is finished. Okay, so when our breathe, when our heart rate goes up to 130, 140 beats per minute. It doesn't stay like that continuously. As soon as we finish exercising, our heart rate will then return back to its normal resting value. So what you need to do now uh, is complete your flip loading mat, okay, and watch the video a number of times so that you know each of these effects off by heart, and then you can come to the next lesson and apply these further.